Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this has been your True Nerd, and welcome to Disassembly 3D, a game about how stuff works, which we're going to learn by pulling it apart. You see, this is a toaster, one of science's great mysteries. There are many mysterious things about the toaster. For example, why do all toasters have this little dial? at the bottom. This little dial at the bottom that has settings between 1 and 7, or sometimes even 1 and 9 if you're nuts, but why would they have those settings when anything beyond 2, 3 at absolute flipping tops, leads to the bread just being horrendously burned? Just whack that up to 7, and we'll just quickly pull this here toaster down and get it working. See, despite the trillions of slices of bread that are converted into toast, by toasters every single year, science has no clue how toasters work. Until today, until today, because I'm going to figure this out by a simple process of pulling it apart until I understand the bits inside. You see right there, I set it to seven and the toast is just burnt and on fire. Let's just get the now completely carbonized bread out of there and start pulling this thing apart. Because that's what this game's about. It's about pulling stuff apart until you figure out how stuff works. You basically just need to figure out what part. No, no, no. The toaster doesn't like this. It knows I'm trying to investigate and toasters are incredibly private. That's why we don't know how they work. Scientists have no idea. You ask a scientist how a toaster works, he'll just pretend he's too busy to answer your question. He's not. He just doesn't know. It terrifies scientists. Aha! We have to go underneath, right, to the sexy, sexy underbelly of the toaster. So, just basically unscrew these nice and quickly. And then just over to you, get that out, and you get that out, and we can start figuring out the mystery. Good. Model WG200IT toaster, 240 volts, 50 hertz, 750 watts. I didn't realise you could measure electricity in hertz, but okay. Right, now we just get the bottom off and we just throw that into the void where it is now lost to us forever. Right, now, in order to learn how this works better, I'm going to try and keep the toaster on as far as I possibly can. Because uh, that'll help me understand. Basically, my starting position here is the way a toaster's going to work is the same way that my computer works, which is electricity plus metal equals heat. Because when my computer's off, it doesn't produce heat. When it's on, it gets warmer. So logically, electricity going through metal makes it hot. And a toaster just takes that principle and expands upon it by deliberately being hot. My computer's just like hot by accident, I think. Oh no, stop it, stop it, stop it. We need to keep that going. So basically, I need to figure out, yeah, yeah, back, back on, back on. I just need to figure out exactly what's going on that causes the, like, the toaster to be hot. So let's just get that on right now and get around the back of it. Okay, quick as we can. Now that we've got those screws, okay, now we can just take the side off and we can start figuring out what all this is. Oh dear. There's electronics here. This might kill the toaster immediately. The toaster... Hang on, can if I, just, if I just unplug this? Unplug that. No. Okay. That's possible. Okay. So this is the safety key. That makes the toaster be not or possibly. It might just be coincidence. Hang on. If I put that down again. No. No, that was the safety key. Fine. So we can't keep the toaster on during this process. And that's the heating bar, which helps with the heating. And that's like the, the side of the toaster. Right. So what's the secret? What's the secret of this? Because there's all these bits in here. Like that's, okay, that's just the bit the bread stands on. And the bit at the bottom, which is just kind of, you know, disappeared into the void somewhere. That just catches the crumbs. That's unimportant. But what about the rest of it? Like, this this is the secret right here. These bits of metal, you put electricity into them, I think, and as a consequence of electricity being put into them, they get hot. But why? Why is that a thing? And also, how do we... Ah, I think we need to go into the toaster. We need to go into the toaster right now in order to unscrew it from the inside. Because other than that, I can't actually get the front off it. There we go, got the front off. Okay, so hang on. Now we can see what's going on inside the belly of the beast itself and try and figure out what the... Oh, bloody hell. Okay, so that's... That's... Uh, there's, there's four pointy bits. Okay, there's four pointy bits. Then there's... There's this... Oh, this needs to be unscrewed as well. Fine, we'll just unscrew all of this nice and quickly so we can get inside the, the circuit board so this is this is the thing that makes the button convert into like heat or whatever and then there's then there's all of this oh that also needs to be unscrewed on the other side too nope just one side and this is wait what was that what was that type hang on hang on hang on no no what was that oh that was the stop button right that's that's the emergency fail safe to make the toaster 
not go. What was that? That wasn't plugged into anything, was it? I don't know. And then we'll just we'll take those those buttons off. No, that was the stop button. What was the what was that thing for then? I don't, I don't know what this bit was for. That bit's just like decorative. Anyway, now we've taken all that off, we can start like unplugging all of this stuff, and then that's the that was the oh no that okay that's the bit the bread sits on. We've got it. We've got to get it like detached first. So I've got to I've got to unplug that. Okay, then that fell out of the void too, and that's still that's still attached. How are we going to get this unattached? Because ultimately the purpose of the game is aha that thing. Because ultimately the purpose of the game is to unattach everything from everything else. Is this going to be? Is that a? There's got to be a screw down there somewhere. Hang on. Where's there? Where's there a screw? Where's there? A, is that a screw? Is that, oh, no, I can just take it off. It's fine. Now that's detached from there. Those two bits that the bread sit on, the bread shelves, can be got rid. Yep, fine. And then we can just take the top off and probably have a look at the rest of it, including the... Ooh. That looks important. Okay. That's a spring. So something in the toaster needs, like, tension... So, ooh, okay, possibly, when you pull down the, the, the lever that makes the bread go down, that causes the spring to, no, would the, would the tension of the spring be how the timer works, or is that presumably the circuit board? I don't, I don't know, and is that more screws? It's not more screws, but there's more, there's just some, like, there's just some metal. There's just some metal in here, and then we can just start basically taking all this stuff apart, but this is the important stuff. Right, right here. I need to get this this bit out, and then this bit needs to detach from this bit. Right, just just get get you off here, then tear you apart, and that's it. There's no parts remaining. We've officially managed to open up the toaster. We haven't learnt much, but that does open up one new option, which is once you've actually fully deconstructed something, you're allowed to just bomb it. You can just basically put a bomb in it, and then you can just basically make it blow up. So, having kind of, you know, got yourself a bit frustrated with the thing you've just deconstructed, you can then explode it, which does make me feel better. Especially as you can kind of determine exactly how slow-mo you'd like it to be. Also, there's 3D mode, which just makes the camera wiggle. I don't think that's how 3D mode works, but whatever. So, our first investigation is possibly inconclusive. The problem is, heat can be produced by multiple things. Like, for example, water, gas, and electricity all make heat. Okay, now gas makes sense to me, because a gas stove produces gas, and then like you put a spark on it, and then the gas just explodes, like over and over in little bits, that's just how gas stoves work. That's fine, because then that's fire, and fire makes heat and light. I'm pretty cool with that, all things considered. Then we've got this mystery, metal plus electricity equals heat, still working on that one. And then there's like the third type of heat, which is my radiators, because my radiators, you pump water into that to make that warm. But then the water already presumably was hot. The radiator was cold, but then like it radiates the heat of the hot water by pumping hot water through it. So really, the mystery we need to solve is where hot water comes from to resolve that loose end. This is a water heater. This is where hot water comes from. So presumably, this will answer our question. So if we just want to push that there, that's marvellous. So we'll just kind of we'll detach that over there. Beautiful. And then that's... Okay, then water just went absolutely everywhere. Then we just detach that and water starts coming out the bottom. And we can also choose how hot or not we want the water to be and also like break it and whatever. Okay, and then, then that falls off. Okay, now I've broken that. Okay, so now we need to figure out what the secret in here is. There must be... Aha! Ha 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 ha! Right, okay, so get that off there and now open up. This is where water comes from. So logically, the water is heated by... You know what? We'll come back to where hot water comes from later. This is a hairdryer. If you think about it, it's basically just a toaster on steroids. Because the principle seems to basically be the same. Alright? You take electricity, and then you'd like, you whack the electricity into a thing. And then the electricity makes, like, a metal thing, the same as inside the toaster, go red. And that produces heat. So we're going to need to figure out how all this works. So we just need to whack out some screws and figure out what is the secret here. So there's a bunch of these things that look like... My brain says that's a transistor. I don't know what a transistor is, but my brain says, like, it looks a bit like that, whatever that is. Then there's just, like, a padlock. We don't need that. That's, like, to keep the the hairdryer safe. And then there's just more transistors, which... The thing is, I don't actually know what the verb transist 
means. I, I genuinely don't. So we've also got ah, the hair dryer is in halves. Okay, so we need we need to crack open the hair dryer here. So we just need to crack this open. Um, just you know, fair warning: don't do this at home to an actual hair dryer. Okay, especially not one that's on. I mean, if it's your hair dryer, do what you want, but like, don't don't do it like while it's on. It's probably a bad idea. Okay. So now we can see this, and now we've actually got our first shot of, like, this happening. And now can we get to the half? We can get to the back now. So, this is basically, yeah, as I was expecting, it's basically just a toaster, but, like, slimmer and with a fan at the back. So someone basically just saw a toaster and saw a fan and said, I've got an idea here. We could make bread while on the move. And then later someone said, oh, you could also use it for drying hair. And, uh, you know, I guess the guy just sort of went with it. Now, can I just take the fan out too? Just take the fan out. There we go. But it's still turning. Still turning right now. So that's that's the engine for the fan at the back. So, okay. So that just stops... I'm assuming I don't know, dust... Does, well, what's that? Oh, possibly it's just to stop you sticking your finger in it, I'm not sure. Uh, which is probably what the bit at the front was for as well. They already just kind of took off. So, yeah, like, sucks in air. Air gets pushed through hot and comes out the front. Okay, the mechanism makes sense. The question is, can we actually detach it? No, we probably can't while it's still on. That would probably be unsafe. So we probably can't do that. There's, this is That's that half of the... That's that half of the thing. Can I do anything else here? Oh... Oh, oh, oh no. Yeah, I detached it. I detached it. Right, so detach that bit of that. And then this is just, that's just like the switch and that's just like the power up there. That bit's not so interesting. What we're interested in is, yeah, this thing down here. Kind of whack that out here. Yeah, pull that out. And then we've got ourselves, that is, aha. Here's the secret. Here's the secret. Because whatever this thing is, this is how heat is. Can we just have a little look see at this? So... Presumably, electricity gets gets fed into it because it turned off the moment the electricity was disconnected. So it's definitely the electricity. It's not coincidence that it needs to be plugged in to work. That's that's a real thing. So, plug in the plug in. But how? I mean, that's that's presumably where the electricity is coming in, and then the electricity gets fed through these things. I mean, is it because it's like they're they're but no, no, it's not because they're slim. I was about to say, is it because it's slim? Like you're trying to force loads of electricity through a slim thing and thus it heats up. But that doesn't make sense because normal wires don't heat up. Or maybe they do. They're just surrounded with like plastic. So we don't notice. And that's a really good thermal insulation. But like what we've seen so far in both the toaster and the hairdryer is thick. Thick metal, relatively. Like, thicker than the wires. So why is it that thick metal heats up when electricity's put through it? It must be special metal. But what kind? The mystery deepens. This is a computer. I vaguely understand how these work, but I'm probably going to demonstrate to you now why I don't actually build my own one of these. I pay someone else to do it for me when I get a new computer. So that's that's probably the wrong side. That's, that's not a flattering angle for the computer. Just, just get off. Right, okay. So, we've got a computer here. Let's just turn it on there. That's on, and then this button does... That button hopefully didn't do much. Right, okay. So, we've got a computer... No, stop it. Okay, so we've got a computer here. Now, the most important thing for a computer is ventilation. So, I'm going to add extra ventilation right now to keep stuff from overheating. You see, I've already improved the computer quite significantly. Imagine all the extra ventilation that exists right now. Is that... That's No, that's just the computer bit of the computer. That's fine. That bit's the... What's that bit? Oh, whatever it is, I just took it off. So, it's not important. Possibly it was holding these bits in place. Is that the... Is that the rear panel? I mean, that feels like that's... Okay, that's... That's a bit. That's... Okay, that... That is the PSU. That is the, the power something unit. The power something unit. I don't know what the S stands for, but it, it's the it's the PSU. So that's, that's there. And then these things are... Ah! These things are just more flipping... Yeah, ventilation. Ventilation. Like, where, where we would put external connectors, if you need 10 million external connectors, I probably don't in this completely fake virtual computer. So we'll just take all of that off. That's lovely. And then there's just... Yeah, that's just the... No, no. Okay. This needs to go... Okay, you need to go... Go away. Okay, seriously? Naff off. And then we just need this thing to be moved over to about here-ish. Lovely. Right. So now I can see inside the computer. So, things I can figure out. That is the PSU. Okay, that produces power. We can probably unplug the computer at this point. That's probably the safest. Now, that's that's a fan. 
Now, if there's a fan there, that means that close by to the fan is going to be... I don't actually know what a CPU looks like. I'm going to guess that is a CPU. Or possibly this is the CPU. I need to, I need to unplug the... I need to unplug this first. There we go. Let's just take that wire out of there. And now I can take the, the fan. That's the fan cover off. And that's the that's the toilet brush to keep the computer clean, probably. Um, I need, Do I need to unplug this? I need to... Oh, there's lots of red lights. Ah, I see the problem. This has been screwed on, like, quite firmly, in fact. So that's fine. So I'm guessing one of these two... Okay, well, hang on. No, no, no. Wait, hang on. If the fan's right here and it's blowing down, logically, then that means like this thing, this is the this is the CPU, and this thing, I assume that's gonna be the motherboard. Okay. And this over here, that's gonna be either the RAM or the solid state drive, that's storage. Okay. So that's storage. Now the question then is, where is the RAM and will my computer now vibrate itself to death? These are the two questions. Just to get 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 out of the, get out of the, get out of the computer. Get out of the computer, which, get out. Get, get, that, I think we've mostly, okay, we got it out. Now I need to get the computer back up on its feet, because now we need to go over to, yeah, the, the next stage. So I've now figured out roughly what everything is, and I've added a whole bunch of extra ventilation. Now in some ways I've also just unplugged a bunch of stuff, but it's basically probably fine. Okay, a new bit fell off there. New bit just fell off. I don't know what that bit is. It's that's just where the computer keeps like its teeth. I don't know why the computer has teeth. Oh, oh, no, wait, hang on. No. I'm going to change around my plan here. Okay. There's loads of stuff plugged into into this thing and it's quite big. And this, this is going to be the RAM, isn't it? That that's the RAM. So if that's that, then this is going to be oh, I was about to say this is the motherboard, not this one. But then this one does have PU on the end. EPU rather than CPU. But also, look, there's all sorts of other stuff plugged into this thing. And, like, the motherboard's the bit where everything gets plugged into it, right? So, logically, this here... I'm just going to keep taking out some screws as we go along as well. Logically, this bit right here... Okay, I'm going to say this is the motherboard. This is the CPU. And those two bits up there are the RAM that's plugged in. But I'm going to need to, like, unplug all the rest of, like, the screws. Also, this bit is... I don't know what this does. This goes in or out, but I'm not really sure what it's it's doing. So that's that that's a mystery. Hang on, just zoom in on that. It seems to be what's attaching the fan to what I now assume is the motherboard or possibly the EPU. Also, there's more teeth. There's more teeth up there. Again, possibly something to do with cooling. I'm not sure. Also, there's another wire stuck inside. Okay, I got it out. I got it out. It's fine. And now the computer's in a healthy, safe position. So that's fine. Slightly, slightly slanted, but mostly fine. Now I've got... Ah! Okay, I got this thing out. So I'm going to have a look at this thing and figure out if I think that's going to be the... Oh! Hang on. No. Oh, that might be the GPU. I forgot the GPU. Yeah! Sorry, that will have been the GPU because I forgot that was a thing that has to be in a computer. Well, not always, but like mostly. Um. So in which case... Okay, which bit's the... Possibly, like, this is both the CPU and the... Well, where's the CPU then? Because now I'm convinced that's... Oh, maybe this is it. Maybe that's it. That... Well, that just fell off. And then, then there's a thing here. We now just need to unplug one of these and unplug this and get that out of the way. And I've broken it again. Just get out. Out. Also, pro tip I was once told by someone who was helping me actually build a computer. They said, before you touch the internal parts of a computer... Either always touch a radiator or never touch radiators. I can't remember which one it was, but it was one of the above. So either do or don't touch a radiator before actually building a computer under all circumstances. That's very, very important. Also, why is the... Why is the PSU at the top? Because I feel like it shouldn't be at the top. Because it feels like it's like... This thing's quite heavy, isn't it? Why wouldn't you put that at like the... Bottom right. I think I just I think I just kicked a bit of wiring out of that. How are we gonna detach this thing? Also, how are we gonna get this bit off? I kind of want this bit off, but all of this is stuck. Like the point of this game really is to figure out in what order stuff needs to be like attached or like not. You'd also notice this computer how like there's lots of little sections. Like this section over here, then there's a little wall, and there was the SSD over here before like I tossed that like over there somewhere. I forget. 
And that's, uh, that's basically what partitioning is. You ever heard that term? Partitioning means you build little walls inside your computer to keep the parts all like separate. Because then it's like safer in case there's a fire. Because then the fire only affects like one thing rather than two. So that's that's just much safer in general. I'm just going to pull those wires off. I don't know what those were, but I don't want them there anymore. And now we can start unpartitioning the computer, which will ultimately make it more efficient. Though also there's there's just a I think I've just broken the floor. I'm not trying to fix that, which is unfortunate because I think there's I think there's still screws here. Um, there might still be a oh oh. Apparently I might be able to get this off. If it's in green, that means I've got a starting point here. Also, what's the... Wait, what's that at the back? What's this thing then? Hang on. Hang on. If the, if this is green, something's green. What's green? Oh, what that, what's that? I'm pretty sure that's not the CPU. That's too small to be the CPU. That's just where the magnet lives. It's very important. Computers use magnets for reasons. Ah, I found some more screws at the back of the computer. I'm going to undo all of that. No, 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 not that. I'm going to undo all these screws because then I can get the PSU out and then I can get my head properly inside the computer and figure out what's going on. Oh, 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 oh dear. Okay, I've got the PSU out. I've got the PSU out and everything just slightly flipped out while I was doing it. That's fine. So now what I need to do is, is just zoom in a bit on this thing. And just take that apart, because every individual piece does need to be all properly removed. And this is what the inside of the PSU looks like once you've, like, taken everything out of it and stuff. So, this is where the electricity lives. Uh, quite a lot of it, actually, because some PSUs are, like, up to a thousand watts. I don't really know what a watt is other than a way of measuring electricity. So, I don't know if that's high enough. It feels high to me, because there's, like, four figures. Like, if I put my hand in, like, a thousand Celsius water, then one, I'd be putting my hand in steam. But it would still be hot steam, and it would still be really bad. So, a thousand watts is probably also bad. And once you've taken the screws out, just pick it up and give it a damn good shaking. And sooner or later, there we go. Sooner or later, you'll have managed to detach everything. And I think that is the PSU fully deconstructed there, ready for cleaning. Perfect. Right, this is basically just a tutorial, by the way, for how to clean your computer, just in case you ever need to do that. So the next step is I need to figure out what this bit is or does. Like, what? Okay, these are... Okay, when I... Okay, what, what does this thing do? This thing either it goes in or it goes out. And I feel like they all need to be out. Out feels good to me, right? Rather than in, they should be out. Like, that That logically makes sense. Yeah, perfect. Oh, I finally got the last screw. I finally got the last screw. So now I can bring this thing out and have a little look at whatever this thing is. So this thing, which I have reason to believe was the motherboard the whole time. Also, this thing's probably now ready to be pretty much taken apart, right? Apparently there's no, I've, I've missed some screws there. There's still some screws to be got out of here somewhere. I need to find screws. This game's very much about looking for screws. Very much about that some of the time. Because there's something that's holding, is that a screw? No, that's a decorative not screw. Ah, wait, hang on. This back side panel, no, still not. So this thing must be being held on by flipping something. Ah, possibly that, but it just needs to go off first. Ah, there we go. And the final partition is removed. And then, I think the, well, I think it's actually, I think I just broke it slightly. I think this is actually just one part. It's just, I kind of smashed it, which you can do. Uh, is this button for something, by the way? Is that, oh, oh, no, that's a different bit. That is definitely a different bit. So we'll just take that off too. Right, I've got to remove all the panels and whatever, because some of them are, yeah, there we go. They're different, and that's probably a different thing back there too. Which of these are different? Is any of this... Is that all one piece now? No. There's a floor that needs to be got off. Good. And then there's... Let's give it a shake. If you're not sure, give it a shake. And that's that's the PSU case in the background. I think that's the case. That's fine. Uh, okay. So there's... Oh, hang on. I never deconstructed the CPU. Oh. Oh, I've missed a trick here. Right. The CPU needs to be deconstructed. So I need to flip that over. And then... Did I say GPU or CPU? I think I meant GPU. This looks like a... Well, I don't know. I mean, like, this looks like a GPU that I've seen pictures of, but then I've not seen many pictures of CPUs. I'm not sure whether they look like this or not. I need to find some way of unscrewing this in order that I can actually, like, get... To, oh. Okay. I've pulled out the... Whatever that is. The spring. Which is important for the springiness. Now, if I just go under here... Aha! Ha 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 ha! More screws! That's, that's the key to this game. Finding screws by going under the world.
Okay, now I can get inside the G and or CPU. Possibly both. I mean, wouldn't it be useful if people started making these parts all, like, together in one? In some sort of, like, brand new CGPU? That would save so much time. Right, I think that's now just a cover case. So now there's nothing else there. Now, what else is here, if anything? Or is this now just one piece? I think now that's just one piece. Okay, that leaves 18 pieces remaining. And I'm gonna guess they're in here. Uh, the question is, how are we gonna... Okay, what if all of these were down? If all of these were down, is that better? I'm gonna put all these down, and then we've got... No, that definitely feels like that is what's holding this in place right now. So I feel like these should definitely all be up to get the toilet brush clean. But the toilet brush is still not coming off, and also neither is the RAM. Okay, what if I just flip it the other way? Is there, there's going to be is there going to be screws the other side? Okay, just just remember where that thing is, which is it's going to be somewhere around here. Oh oh uh oh uh oh oh no! I'm through the. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's under control. No, flipping it over hasn't revealed anything. I've already taken out all of the screws. So back over to what's probably the right way. I'm kind of running out of space in my little room right No, back over to the right way. This will be easier in VR. There's very few things that's true for, but this is one of them. Now, why aren't you coming out? Or can you come out? Sometimes even if it's a red, you can kind of slide it out. Yeah, that's the entire board right there. These are, I think, the rams. And you are just not doing anything. Hmm. Okay, I can't figure out how to detach that. Also, apparently there's like 18 other parts that I haven't actually detached, probably including the RAM there. But, for the most part, I'd say we've done a pretty good job just actually removing all these parts. And now they're ready for cleaning. And then once we've cleaned them, we simply reconstruct the PC. And the way to reconstruct the PC is you start off with one of these bits and then you you take this bit and then you'd this is a helicopter if you think about it it's basically the final evolved form of a hairdryer because a hairdryer you hold still in your hand but it produces wind that blows the thing next to it but basically just a helicopter takes that and takes it to an extreme where it's producing so much wind rather than you holding the helicopter in your hand in order to blow things away it actually blows the helicopter up into the sky which is useful for reasons and fortunately this game actually kind of works in such a way where if you're very kind of gentle and careful, you can actually turn the helicopter on. So if I'm very lucky, just like I turned on the toaster earlier, I might be able to... Oh, yeah, okay. So look, we've got we've got some steering there. So I can steer the helicopter. I just need to actually activate the... Oh, oh, okay. So that's... Okay, that's the control system for the helicopter. And then we've just got to figure out where's, where's the on switch for the helicopter. That's, that's doing the helicopter's doing a little... Boogie. I'm guessing this is how you steer a helicopter, like the angle of the the propellers. Okay, this is the just very carefully. Oh, oh, uh, okay. Okay, we didn't we didn't need that. We didn't need that. I just need to find the the on switch for that because it looks like all of this is is not the on switch. So I need to find a way to to tell the helicopter to be like. Okay, we didn't, we didn't need, we didn't need, we didn't need that either. I just need to get, get out of the, get out of the, get, I can go over there. We didn't need that bed. All I need is to find, like, where the ignition, where do you, where's the keys? And I go, okay, don't do that. Do not touch that. There's, okay, we didn't, we don't need both seats either. So we'll just, we'll get rid of that too. So we just need to get anything that makes the, just the, the helicopter, if we just basically pull it. We've got a second one of those. It's fine. Then we've got... A, no, that's 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 the missile launcher. So we probably don't need that. Okay. If I just take the front bit off the helicopter, then logically I'll be able to find the controls. You see this? This is presumably like the thing that you push to... Oh. Yeah, you push this and makes the... That was probably the brake. That was probably the brake anyway. Okay. Just anything that makes the, the helicopter... Okay. That's fine. And we've got the... What is the... Oh, balls. Okay, the helicopter's not doing so desperately hot here, but this is fine. Now we can figure out what the... What's this bit? What's this bit? What's that, what's that even for? We've got this bit over, over here, and this is... Okay, so this helicopter's probably at this point not going to fly. One rotor is probably insufficient. 
all things considered. But on the plus side, we now know how a helicopter, like, helicopters, which is, it's basically just a hairdryer. And now it's on fire. So it's in also, in some ways, like a toaster. Like, you could toast bread on that right now. This is a submarine, and when you think, oh, bloody hell. Delicate bastards, aren't they? All right, fine, whatever. No, you're not getting away from me. You're not getting away from me. You can go under the water, and you can hunt them down. <laughs> right, so submarines are apparently just made of flipping craft paper that just sink the moment you tear the slightest hole in their hull. Bloody hell. This is an elevator, and I'm increasingly convinced this is not exactly how they work. Because, um... This one here is just, it's just floating. That is definitely just floating, because I don't think it's being supported by, okay, hang on, hang on, we need to, we need to basically take a bit more off this thing right here. Here we go, take this bit off, and then we go, ah, there we go! The elevator figured that wasn't supposed to be flying anymore, well done game, well done, you figured it out. This is the Titanic, and it didn't work. That was the entire flipping point. So we're just going to grab ourselves one of these, and screw you, you stupid broken boat. Oh, blimey, that, that worked better than I was expecting. Screw you, screw you, screw you, you stupid unsinkable bastard. Oh, unsinkable, unsinkable, you say? Good luck with that, then. If for some reason you really don't like Titanic, or maybe the film Titanic, this might be a really good therapeutic game for you, actually. You can also go underwater and, yeah, just kind of, you know, visit the ruins if you'd like, which is nice. I quite like that, all things considered. Just kind of, you know, heading down under here, having the look see at what's going on under the water. Very nice. You can, by the way, for the big ones, actually, like, properly go inside them if that's what you want to do. So if you want to just kind of, you know, nip inside the actual... Titanic there and just kind of, you know, go and visit one of the decks or whatever. Here, just kind of maybe just a tiny bit further forward there. This is presumably, that's the bit where, like, Rose and Jack had sex in, like, a car. Then we go up one stage there. And then just kind of just keep going very carefully because it's all quite small. Oh, hang on, hang on. I had it for a second there. I think I had, like, the staircase. The staircase where Rose comes down. That probably wasn't a real story. Oh, there's a flipping iceberg. <gasps> there's actually an iceberg. Oh, flip. Oh, flipping heck, yes. Yes, 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 yes. You can just restage the Titanic. That's amazing. Right, okay, here we go, here we go. Oh, 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 hang on. No, we can do it, like, better this time. Just now we just need to go down. There we go. There we go. Just when you thought it was safe to board a massively oversized ship crossing the Atlantic. Derna, derna, derna. Derna, 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 This time the iceberg can swim! I'm actually going to see if I can recreate the sinking of the Titanic here. I'm going to take the iceberg. I'm going to give the Titanic a great big smash with the iceberg. So, yeah. There we go. Right. I've knocked a bit off the Titanic. Doesn't feel like much, to be honest. I'm just a bit more. There we go. I'm just going to create a bit more of a dent. There we go. Right. And the iceberg can just, like, go over there. I'm not going to see if the Titanic actually sinks, because this game will officially now impress me if the Titanic actually flipping sinks at this point. Because now, now a whole bunch of... Oh, flip, it might be. Oh, flip, I think the game is actually properly acknowledging... Yeah? Yeah, that's definitely actually going down. The game properly actually acknowledges which areas do or don't have water in them. Ooh! Well, colour me impressed, Disassembly 3D. So now, time to see if this game basically does the same thing that I assume the real Titanic did, but more importantly, the film Titanic did, where ultimately it, like, it breaks in two, and then jackknives, and then propellers go in the air, and then the Irish guy falls to his death and smashes into the propeller. That's my favourite bit of the film Titanic. That's just the best bit. Right, so it's definitely going under at this point, and more and more is being dragged under too. Excellent. And look at all of them. What are you thinking about it? Just look how much of the Titanic's actually made of... of wood. Like, rather than the lifeboats, what if they'd just basically just taken fire axes and started chopping bits off the deck? Because wood would have floated, so that would logically make sense, right? They should have just done that. Okay, now we can can we get to like a, a half and half? Yeah, we can go under the water right now, check what's going on. Because if the film is to be believed, at some point, this all has to go horribly, horribly wrong here. And, like, the pressure will make the ship, like, buckle and break. Oh! Oh, it happened! Oh, it actually did happen! Ooh! Right, okay. Now, is it going to end up arse in the air? So there goes, like, the front half with the lifeboats. By the way, we should probably, like, release the lifeboats. Uh, just, just go for the lifeboats here. Go for them and release them. Ooh! There we are. <laughs> lifeboat for you. Lifeboat for you. And it is indeed going arse up. Okay! 
very impressed. That's really cool. And then, yep, there we are. We're going to have all the people down here, and they're going to fall and smash into that thing, except it's kind of in the day. I feel like, the, you know, the skybox should be at night, given that's where the crash happened. I think that's where the crash happened. It's where the crash happened in the film, so I assume that's accurate. I should probably release some more lifeboats, actually, while that one's doing that. So just over here, while this thing just kind of, you know, produces some more air bubbles, let's just quickly get some more lifeboats, because the water's freezing and there's not enough lifeboats. And indeed, you know, eight does seem like a fairly small number, all things considered. So that's all fine. There we go. Plenty. Plenty for you, Rose, there. And then we've got this bit over here. Yeah, now it's just going arse up in the air. Oh, this is really cool. That's really cool. Hang on, hang on. The iceberg's not done yet. The iceberg's thirst for blood cannot be satisfied this easily. It's coming in for another... Oh, no. No, the Titanic knows. And the iceberg comes in for the body slam. Nice. I mean, I'm just tearing the deck off right now. You just tear the deck off. It being wood, it does appear to float. Yes. So, actually, I think I'm onto something here. So, if we just now go up to the surface, just flipping... Look at all that. Look at all that wood that's floating. That's like... Those are the lifeboat, and that's just stuff I just pulled off the Titanic. Okay, that is way, way, way better. But thanks to the fact I've actually done this one previously, we can actually start introducing some more interesting scenarios, which is, what if it wasn't actually an iceberg? What if instead, someone had planted a bomb on the Titanic? And where that bomb is, presumably affects, like, you know, stuff. So hang on, let's get up to the top here. What if someone had put a bomb right like in the... Which is the back of the ship? Is that stern or aft? Is stern the opposite of aft? I don't know. Right, don't take that bit off because I'll just fall off the back of the ship. Okay, what I need to do is I need to find like a nice thing. I can just drop something. This will do. I'm just going to take this bit off. And the Titanic isn't thrilled with that, to be honest. It's, it's a little bit... It's a little bit wibbling out. Okay, good. It came out. <laughs> We were able to just kind of shake it out there. That's all fine. So that bit is is A-OK. -okay. We'll just get that bit out of the way. Now, the ship should not be sinking at the minute. And then over here, we've got ourselves... Hang on, where the flip is this? This is... I don't even know what this is. Oh. There's definitely some water down there. I may have done some damage to the Titanic. How much damage have I just done to the Titanic? It doesn't appear to be sinking. Right. Spawn a bomb... Right, spawn that bomb over there, and now I just grab this bomb, and I drop this bomb into this bit of the Titanic. Oh, it's not going in. Ah, darn it. I might need to... Does someone make it a little bit more space? Oh, uh oh Okay, pretend we didn't see that. That's fine. So now, now instead of it being like, you know, the bit where the, they hit the iceberg. Screw the iceberg. The iceberg is, hang on, a benevolent John shall simply take the iceberg and move it out of the way. There we go. Instead, Jack and Rose are just here and they're enjoying their night together and their kind of, you know, star cross, cross class thing. And instead, oh no! And, oh... Oh, I think it's exploded. Does it explode at the rear? Is something exploding at the rear? I think it fell out of the bottom of the ship. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it fell out the bottom of the ship and the ship was already sinking and it just fell out the bottom. Okay, so that didn't go... Okay, let's try that again. Oh, this is good. I've managed to get like a front deck off pretty easily. So I'm just going to leave that right here and then we're going to... Never mind, we don't need to leave that right here. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm not sinking the ship right now. Now, if I pull out this bit, I probably will start sinking the ship. So probably best we don't do that. Instead, we're just going to drop the bomb in over here. Okay, we're just going to drop the bomb in on this front. No, this, this front bit. There we go. So we're just going to drop the bomb. Now, this time, Rose and Jack presumably aren't at the front anymore. What they're going to be is they're going to be at the back playing with, like, the cranes. Okay, and, and that's that's how that's going to work. So they're just going to be back, back here, and they're going to be like, I love you, Jack. I love you so much, and we're going to be together forever. When we get to America, everything's going to be different. And oh, no, the Titanic's exploded! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll do. That'll flip and do. Right, so that was... Okay, I feel like that was potentially a more powerful bomb than maybe existed at this point in history. I feel like that, that felt like quite a big bomb. Over there. So, um, half of the Titanic's just disintegrated. And I do, by the way, quite like the slow. We'll just kind of speed that up a little bit while the parts just come splashing down. Now, I'm gonna guess the rest of the Titanic is not going to be doing so hot at this point. Though, 
I'll be interested to see what the now sinking pattern is of this new one. That'll be quite good. So now we can bring this back up to speed. Okay, she... Wait, hang on. Was she not sinking? I think the Titanic's... Okay, are, are, are we sure? Are you sure this is fine? Because I feel like this can't be fine. But she doesn't actually seem to be... She's a tougher... Oh, no, no. No, she's definitely taking on water. She's definitely taking on water. I'd be very surprised if uh, she didn't sink at this point. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I'm going to be very honest. And there we go. The people who are just having dinner, they probably like, you know, they're probably at this point realizing something's gone wrong. Something's gone just a little bit wrong uh, with their dinner date at this point. But it's fine. I'm sure the captain is absolutely got it. Oh, no. Iceberg dead ahead. Oh, no. The iceberg's coming anyway. Yeah, there we are. I think the iceberg's going to hit the Titanic anyway. I think the iceberg hits regardless. So there we are. And the iceberg coming in for seconds and thirds and oh, and it comes, and it comes for the finisher. It's coming in for, hang on, if we just make it go up, make it go up, make it go up. In comes the iceberg with the body slam and boom. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's probably the Titanic pretty screwed at that point. Yeah, the Titanic's pretty screwed. It can't take a body slam from an iceberg. So broadly that finished off in the same way. Okay, what if we just kind of basically lay the bomb on the rear deck? Because the rear deck's the one that keeps being the last one standing. No, no, a little bit further, a little bit further, right about here. Yeah, if we just lay the bomb right there, and now this time we'll give the front a chance. Maybe the problem is just the rear. There we go. So, I like the chimney's being flung off into cocky space. That's good. Right. Now, front of the boat, this is your chance to shine, all right? Up to now, it's all been about the rear of the boat surviving. Now, obviously, you're going to be the one that survives the longest. Um, I think the power just went out. Oh, is there actual power being modelled? That would be hilarious if there was, if the power just went out. Because I just, like, killed the bit where the engines are, or the power generation, or the... Wait, where does power come from the Titanic? Do you think of the Titanic, power comes from putting electricity into metal? Or, wait, no, that's heat. Right, put this on. Oh, no! Oh, it went wrong. Oh, one of the chimneys on the way down just completely nailed the front of the Titanic. It might have survived if it wasn't for that. Probably not, to be honest. I feel like, I feel like you know, you wouldn't put money on the Titanic actually making it out of it at this point. I feel like at this point, the Titanic is, is pretty much in trouble. Uh, you know what? Let's just kind of hasten the demise. And you know what? The bomb was underwater there. It didn't actually do that much. Speed things up. I think we need potentially more bombs than that. Yeah, drop in more bombs as soon as that bomb's done. Yeah, there we go. That's probably the Titanic finished off. Though, uh, you know, bare minimum. This time the front gets to be the last to go. So here we are. We're just going to join the Titanic on the, no, on the deck. There we go. On the deck. There we are. There we are. Oh, beautiful. I don't know what that bit is. That's just a bit of, like, boat. It's like, there we go. Get that bit out of the way. Lovely. Now we just join the Titanic. On her now. Final one. Okay, you stop glit stop glitching. You you're ruining it. You're ruining get okay, if I get this out of the way, can I can I get just go go away. Go away. Oh, we missed the final sinking of the Titanic. And I feel like the chimney stack probably isn't floats. So that's probably not useful. And this is a car. They work by magic. Nobody knows who bloody cares. I hate cars. Goodbye, car. There we go. You want to know how a car works? That's how a car bloody works. You put a bomb in it, it goes kaboom. Nice. Also, there's a Lego model. There's actually a Lego model in this thing. So if you want to, you can do a sort of inverted Lego building game where instead of building Lego, you're actually pulling apart Lego. But you know what? I think you get the point, ladies and gentlemen. This is Disassembly 3D, and it's a very odd, unusual game. Kind of completely different from anything else I've ever played in the channel. But I'll say... I've rather had a nice time with it. It's it's unique and special and all sorts of interesting things are going on with it. But I've actually had 
yeah, a really interesting time playing it. And there's like, I think right now there's, uh, hang on, there's how many different packs? I think there's said uh, there was like, there was 18 or so different, like different packs of things, and each of them's three. So there's quite a few things to take apart. Some of them are quite complicated. Like there's an aeroplane, for example, and like an antique car, and a safe, and other kitchen appliances, like I don't understand. Like a, a coffee maker, there's a coffee maker as well, all of that sort of stuff. And all of it you can take apart and sort of speed run, because basically this is basically a speed run taking things apart game I suppose at its base as well as figuring out how things work in all sorts and also you can just take apart Lego if you enjoy taking apart Lego you can take apart Lego so there you are disassembly 3d a very unusual game but I suspect for a small minority of you yeah absolutely flipping one that will be essential for you for the majority probably not absolutely fine and oh oh he's, he's bugging out a bit can't chill out there you go you figured it out but for just a small minority of you watching, you've probably already gone and bought it. Because I imagine for some people, this is complete and total crack. But definitely not quite for everyone. But for those who it is a thing for, ooh, oh yes. And I've had a very pleasant time with it, indeed. So, that's that, ladies and gentlemen. Who knows, maybe we'll return to this to have a look at some of the other very complex models and try and figure them out. We'll see. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been the utterly unique and really rather special Disassembly 3D. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Claire, show off what the button packaging does. That's amazing! 25, 50, 100, and then 110 If you need to hide the butter, you just fold the packaging onto the butter and it... I... That's amazing! <laughs> That's such a good idea! See, How long has the butter been doing this? Forever. <laughs>